Uh, we'll we'll look at that in a minute. So in Second John, okay, we're talking about kingdom doctrine, guys. That's how I was studying. We were sorry about the uh, the sound. It was my fault on that. I got to pay attention to that. And so we're talking about kingdom doctrine. And uh, what the verse I gave y'all? Second John. Well, well, the first one we read was First, first Timothy, Timothy chapter four, four verse one. yeah four and one. We talked about well, you said second John, yeah. So you didn't get to tell okay, Second John, Second John chapter one verses nine and ten. We're talking about doctrine. Now, keep in mind that doctrine only means uh, 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 to learn. Okay, mm -hmm. and so, but if you're learning, that means that you have to be taught by somebody. Am I right? Mm -hmm. So when Yeshua said that my doctrine is not my own. But he that sent me, so the father taught him the doctrine. So people have to understand that. So doctrine, doctrine is something that you have learned. Right? Doctrine is something that you learn. Uh, so as we look at 2 John chapter 1, verse 9 and 10, Ms. Marva. Verse 9. Whosoever transgressed and abided not in the doctrine of Yeshua, of, of the Messiah okay. has not now, 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 hold up with that. Hold up with that. He said, Whosoever transgressed and abide not in the teaching of Messiah. Mm -hmm. Boom. Mm -hmm. So you have to understand. First question would be like, okay, what is the teaching of Messiah? What is his doctrine? Because he's saying his doctrine is not his own, is his father. Mm -hmm. right. So the doctrine that Yeshua was taught was the Torah, exactly. the prophet, the law of Moses, and the prophet and the Psalm. So that's the doctrine that he was taught. Am I right? Yes. Go ahead. So I said that if uh, if he doesn't abide in the doctrine of the Messiah, he has not Elohim. He that abided in the doctrine of the Messiah, he has both the Father and the Son. If there come any unto you, now listen to this here. This is what John said. This is Apostle John. Go ahead. If there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine. Receive him not in your house, mm. neither by neither bid him Elohim speed. See, I don't even tell the Muslim, God bless you no more. I don't, I don't even tell the joke. No, in other words, don't let them in your house. This is what John said. If they come to you with a strange doctrine, you know, Joe, wouldn't it? Don't let them inside the house. John said, John, take it serious. Don't even give them, don't even say, God bless you. Have a nice, no, no, John said that what you're doing is, if you're telling them what they're doing is correct. It's okay. yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's a powerful statement right there. And this is Apostle John talking. Wow. This is Apostle John talking. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> For he that bid it him, Elohim speed, is partaker mm. of wow. his evil deeds. Huh? You see what I'm talking about? Wow. Yeah. So we talking about doctrine. We're talking about doctrine. These are false doctrines contrary to the word of Yah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what common do mean Baal having, we have nothing. Mm -hmm. The scripture is serious about this here. Mm -hmm. my, my, my. It's us in, in the West. Just think that, well, you believe what you want to believe, and you believe. No, 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 no. The scripture does not teach that. Amen. The scripture does not teach that. Let's look at uh, Matthew chapter 7, verses 27 through 28. Now, this is when Yahshua was teaching uh, in chapter 5, chapter 6, and chapter 7, which we call the Sermon of the, on the Mountain, right? Mm -hmm. So now, after he finished teaching, listen to what they said about him. Miss Rose, Matthew chapter 7, verse 27 and 28. Listen what he, everybody says. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. And it came to pass when Yeshua had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine. Huh? Huh? They was astonished at his doctrine. They was astonished at his doctrine. Why? Look what verse 29 says. For he taught them as having authority. Yes, Not as the scribes. Just reading stuff. Uh -huh. When he taught stuff, it made sense. Yes. 
So the multitude heard him. Everybody heard him. Go to uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse 1. Let's see who was all there. Five one says what? Matthew chapter five verse one says it more. And seeing the multitude, uh -huh. he went up into a mountain. And when he was set, his disciples came unto him. Mm, notice that. So we see who's all there, right? There was a multitude, his disciples. And then he said he opened his mouth and he taught them. That's the word. He taught them. He taught them. He's teaching his disciples, right? Right. Very important. So we're talking about doctrine. What is he teaching them? The doctrine. He teaches them what his father taught him. He teaches them the law of Moses, the Torah, the prophets, and the psalm. He teaches them. Very important that when I'm talking about doctrine, biblical doctrine, I'm talking about what's in the Bible. The word of Yah. If I was in Islam, I'm going to teach you what Muhammad said. If I'm in Buddhism, I'm going to teach you what Muhammad, I'm not going to say, well, this is what Buddha used to do, but it's done away with. I'm not, I'm not going to say, well, I know it's in the Quran, but this is done away with. Nobody, no other religion, which we're not a religion, but I'm going to use that term. No other religion ever say what their teacher said is done away with, but Christianity. No other religion, I'm saying, no other religion ever says that what that teacher said is done away with, but Christianity. Go ahead, Ms. Rose. In that movie, he made a point, and he said that uh, I turned it down, so. the Bible uh -huh. is the only book that has ever received criticism. Quran will not allow themselves to be looked into and uh -huh. questioned uh -huh. okay and uh -huh. all the other, all the other ones are the same way they just they can't stand to the test but but the bible has oh, been and tested and tried. critiqued and it's like change where it, is. it it's always the same yes that's, yep. that's true that's true and understanding that understand how that uh, you word has been tested it has been tested by fire. The Bible tells us that. It's been tested. What that verse? Let me find this verse right quick. Uh, let's go to Psalm. I think it's in Psalm, Psalm 19. Let's check it out. Psalm 19. Help me, Holy Ghost. Help me. Let's look what it says about it. Psalms 19, pick it up in verse 7. This is what it says about the word of God. The law of the Jehovah is perfect. Uh huh. Converting the soul. The testimony of the Jehovah is sure, making wise the simple. Go ahead. The statutes of the Jehovah are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Jehovah is pure, enlightening the eyes. Go ahead. The fear of the Jehovah is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Jehovah are true and righteous altogether. This is what verse 10 says. More to be desired are they than gold, mm. yea, than much Fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Mm. Wow. This is the word. That's the word. It's telling you how powerful the word is. It has been tried by fire. Hallelujah. Truly has been tried by fire. Mm -hmm. So now we're talking about, as it says, that the multitude went on the mountain. I mean, uh, uh, came to the mountain and he sat down, getting ready to teach his Tamadine, his disciples. Very important. I'm going to show you how, uh, 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 go to Matthew chapter uh, 28. Matthew chapter 28. Turn this back up a little bit. Matthew chapter 28. So we're going to go back and forth with a couple of words so that we can understand. Now, the word uh, here. For teach is the, the oxy means to learn. Okay, now to learn. So what are you learning? If you're sitting, if you're learning something, that means somebody is teaching you. Am I right? So if you're sitting on a teacher who don't know nothing, you ain't learning nothing. I don't care how long you've been in the church. I don't care if you're singing in the choir. I don't care what you do. If that man don't know nothing, you don't know nothing. 
Very important. That's why when people come here, they say, man, I have learned more here in a year than I learned 20 years in a church. You understand? Now watch this here. So let's play with this other word. So the Greek word that we use for, uh, I gave you, uh, for to learn is 1322, okay? So we're going to play with that, okay? It's very important because I want you to, to see the difference. So now we're talking about the word doctrine, right? So that means that the people was astonished. Watch this here. The verse that we just read in Matthew 7, 28, where it says, and the people was astonished, okay? Was astonished, was, a, was a, amazed. They was like, whoa, yes. in his teaching. And they say, he teach with authority. With authority means that you have a conviction about what you're saying. Mm -hmm. yeah. You see what I'm saying? You have a conviction about what you're saying. So here is Yeshua teaching, and after he finished, and listen, this his teaching was so powerful. Did I tell y'all to turn us away? Yeah, well, yeah, not yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Then watch this here, because I, I might switch and we'll come back. But I, I want you to see this here. About that verse, go back to Matthew chapter 7. I'm going to show you how powerful Yeshua doctrine was. 28, 728. Watch this here. His doctrine was so powerful. And, 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 that, and that, now remember, he's sitting on the Mount of Olives, and, and it's like even though his disciples came to him, but the way he's sitting over this valley, he can speak and his voice still carries. Huh? Am I right? His voice still carries. It's like in the cave. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Then your voice has carried. So he's teaching. And so though his disciples came up the mountain, but other people were still hearing them that were sitting on the on the on the low area, right? Mm -hmm. Now watch this here to prove that they say this doctor was so astonished, so moved, that they were different from the from the scribes. Because all they had was the letter of the law. But he's teaching by the spirit of the law. Right, right. Watch this here. Now, when you look at Matthew chapter 8, watch this here, verse 1. To prove that his message moved, moved somebody. It said that when he came, what? Yeah. Down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. <laughs> watch this here. Huh? They moved. They were moved by his message. He and, and and then what is it? And now the and now what is it? And, anytime you see behold, it means stop, pay attention. Okay. Meaning something about to happen. It's the Hebrew word hey. Mm -hmm. It it's the fifth letter hey with a man hand up and he yeah. said behold, look, pay attention. Yeshua always used that word when he said behold, a soul went out to see a soul. Right. So he's telling the audience. Pay what I'm about to say, behold, a soul went out to say. So anytime you say the word behold, he says, stop and pay attention. Watch this here. Verse 2 again. And behold, okay, stop, pay attention. There came a what? A leopard. Huh? And what? Did what? Worship him. Bow down to him. Bow down to him. Saying, Master, if thou will. Mm. Huh? Yes. Yeah. Uh, this boy put his life in jeopardy. Yeah. Right, right. Huh? Yeah. Cause because he unclean. What are he supposed to be saying? Unclean. 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 This leper heard about this this man from Galilee. Oh, my, my, my. Huh? He didn't care no more. I listen. I could even die with the disease or die by stoning. Whoever may be, but I listen. If this man is who he say he is, who I heard that he opened blind eyes, I heard that he healed. Huh? He, that this this man was moved by his message. A leper came and worshipped him. Watch this here. Now, watch this. Doctrine moves you. See, if people just hear what's being taught here, it will move them from them dead congregations. Huh? It ain't the first time this man heard Torah, but he never heard it like that. So it said that he came, a leper came, uh, came uh, uh, a leopard, and worshiped him. 
Now, what comes to my mind that even though he said, even though I got leprosy, even though I'm an outcast, but I'm still going to worship. Huh? Even though nobody want to be around me, but I'm still going to worship. Oh, y'all hear me? Huh? Even though I'm contagious, but I'm still going to worship. Isn't that something? Some people, when when they sick, they don't want to worship no more. When they ain't feeling good, they don't. This man in a disease situation, but it didn't stop him from hearing the word of God. You know what I'm talking about? This man could have stayed in the cave on the outcast, but something that he heard about Yeshua, maybe somebody invited him, said, come hear this man from Galilee. He ain't like the scribes and the, and the Pharisees. When he talk, things happen. When he right. teach, demons run. Yes, yes. Woo. He said, and, it, and he came to worship him, saying, Master, if thou will. Don't we always ask, we find ourselves in a, cri a critical situation. We always uh, ask ourselves, but well, Lord, if you will. Notice, now we always think that the Most High don't want to do for his children, for all mankind. Yes, he does. But, 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 but sometimes we find ourselves, I don't know why I'm preaching like this. So, I'm going to be teaching. You are, you are. <sighs> if thou will, okay, if thou will, thou can, notice, make me clean. The man, how do, how do, how do faith come? What is the Greek word for hearing? Remember? No, Greek, remember? The spoken word, remember? The aura. Remember? Rhema. Remember, he's, he's teaching. He's teaching. And the rhema word came to the man, moved him. It moved him to action. You understand? Know if my word that I'm teaching, not my word, but you know what I'm saying, if it doesn't move us to action, then ain't no rainbow going on. Come on, talk to me. That's true because, you know, you can you can hear something all day long. Somebody can be talking all day long. You can hear these scriptures and hear them, but it's when you listen. It's when it's going to set in. You can be talking, it's like, wah, wah, wah. But Come when on, you start listening, <laughs> it just falls in Come your on, ear. Yeah. You tell your child to stop and stop. And they they hear it, they miss, they hear it. But until you call their name, they start listening. Come on, now. You know? Yes. So that's just like that rain must sit in yes. there. Yes, that's no. a word. What you got, Ms. Rose? Oh. It, it made Come me on, think man. about the, the Ethiopian eunuch uh -huh. that was uh, on his way, uh -huh. you know, and the Spirit of the Lord said, Philip, go catch up with that uh -huh. chariot. And he did. He goes in there and the, that eunuch heard Philip teach the word and something happened to that eunuch to where he decided, oh, he's like, oh, there's water. What what does hinder me to be yeah. baptized? Why put it off? Why put it off? Why not? Again, wow. the word will cause you to want to do Take what action. you just heard. Take yeah. action to the word. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. To the word. yes. Yes. Woo. Come on, now. you that's see? That's yeah. That's faith. faith. You know, that's the faith. Yes. That's faith. Action. Yeah. It's yes. an action word. It's yes. an action word. Woo. The word is alive. <laughs> So the word is a lie. So when I'm teaching something, then then whatever the less is 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 to bring us into order. That's the power of the word. But if you find yourself, you know, uh, 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 this leopard could have just just had a pity party. Oh, just another message. Just another message. But he was moved. He was moved. Okay. He didn't care no more. The sure words moved him where he was. Huh? A leper came. And he worshipped Yeshua, bowed down him. Can you imagine when he, when he made himself known that everybody just... Huh? 
Yes. Huh? He, he had plenty of room to bow down. Didn't so it's obvious that he he had himself covered. Yes, 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 yes. How many lepers that we got in the house that they just cover and oh, people don't know they look? They don't know they lepers they and they keep know. coming. They don't even know. Come on now. Mm -hmm. huh? Until that rain, all that. Listen what the question said. If thou will, mm -hmm. thou can make me what what faith this man has what faith this man has that what what did he hear about Yeshua that moved him that knew that he 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 was different from the scribe because the, the writer wanted to know that he talked with authority when the word is taught with authority it moves people I was saying to the father, living in this this world, I say, I got to keep my eyes pure. I got to keep my mind pure. I don't want to stand before your people with lust and pride and anger. I, I don't want to stand before your people. So you want to keep me. That's what Jews say now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and falling and present you. I don't want to stand before the people in flesh. I need your power to flow through me. And how you get that? Now, Hallelujah. tomorrow is uh, 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 the sixth day of the week, and it's going to be, tomorrow is going to be 20, 21 days till we celebrate Pesach, okay? Mm -hmm. Can't speak for no other congregation, but for us. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to pronounce a 21-day fast. Mm -hmm. Now, you can do it how you want to do it because, because, each person is different. Now, I'm asking the Father, uh, you know, I don't want to just take on something just, just to be doing something, but I really want to, I, I want this fast to be impact. Mm -hmm. I, I, I want to be able to, to stand before the people, y'all, and those that come to Passover, knowing that I have set myself apart. Mm -hmm. man, 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 man. I believe the Father's looking for such those who will stand in the gap. Hallelujah. You know, and all that preparation, but 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 he can stop and say, Yeah, but you not never got prepared. Mm -hmm. See, we gotta get prepared. Yes, Lord. You know, though I'm getting prepared so I can be uh that the father can flow through me, but you ought to say that, you know, Father, I want to be prepared because I don't know who I'm gonna sit by. And I want your anointing to be on me so I can minister to whoever you sent me by. Why? Because we are all ministers. What our they say? House of study, the school of purpose and destiny, turning students into teachers. Very important. And so everyone, if they are being taught correctly, could teach others. That's why when people say, Well, I I I can't teach, sitting under me. What do you mean you can't teach? Oh, you ain't been paying attention. Because I would feel embarrassed if somebody asks you in personal and I'm standing right there and they ask you, where are the feasts located in the in the Bible? And you you have to look. You know, I mean, you have to like pass them. Like, I mean, I mean, you see what I'm it's like certain things that you ought to know, right you know, the definition of the word Torah. Yeah, yeah. You ought to know these things. These are basic things. What you mean you're not ready? What you mean you're sitting on all this teaching and you... <sighs> let's go to our favorite... I know I told you enough scripture. But, but let's go to our favorite scripture that we deal with because I want to make sure that those understand that you are accountable sitting under this kind of teaching. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 5. You know where I'm going. Verse 12. This is what, this is what, the, this is what the writer of the Hebrews is going to say. I'm telling you, it'd be better you just turn off the channel and don't turn this thing on. This is what the writer of Hebrews says. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 12. Miss Rose, what it said. I want you to pay attention. For when for the time ah. you ought to be teachers. Ah. Ye have need that one teach you again the oracles of the word of Elohim. Uh -huh. 
and are become such as have need of milk and not strong meat. She's not reading the Bible. She's quoting it. She quoting it. Notice that the writer Hebrew said there is a time. Other words, there is a time you ought to be. I know you say, well, I, I don't want to be a teacher. No, no, no. It's not the point that you got to, listen, you got to have somebody in your life that you want to teach or teach, share with. It ain't talking about the five-fold ministry. We talking about that your friends ask you about this place and you can't tell them. Mm -hmm. Amen, amen. For when the time come, you ought to be teachers. Yeah. So the writer of Hebrews said, listen, you can't stay in pre-K all. <laughs> right. There ought to be some graduation. I'm just, I'm just saying there ought to be some graduation going on. Well. I was talking to my wife the other day because I'll be listening and hearing things, right? I keep telling people, listen, the leader always hear different. You say, what do you mean? Well, when Moses came down the mountain, uh, 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 Joshua said, there's war in the camp. Joshua wasn't out the leader, am I right? He was a, he was a student. He was learning from Moses. But Moses is the leader. He said, no, nah, that ain't war. That's, that's, that's an orgy going on. And, 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 and mothers, mothers have that ear too. You hear your child crying, daddy want to run it and go see what's going on. And she say, daddy, he ain't crying. He ain't crying. I, I hear him. No, 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 no. He ain't crying. Hey, he ain't crying. I know the difference. See, parents, mothers know the difference when your child is hurt or he just fell down and want to whine. So the writer Hebrew tells us that, 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 that we have to be growing. We have to grow. Okay, okay. If you don't want to listen to the writer of Hebrew, then let's go to Peter, who is an apostle of Yeshua Hamashiach. Let's go to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2, and listen to what Peter says. Peter going to tell you what the problem is with people not growing. See, I got to even show you that it's important for us to grow. Ms. Marvel? Yeah. Uh, verse 1. We'll pick it up in verse 2. First okay. Peter 2. Uh -huh. two. As newborn babe. Mm, as newborn babe. What that word? Newborn babe Rabbi. is Rapha. Infant. A young. Go ahead. Desire the sincere milk of the word. That's no. the word. That's the problem. They don't desire it. Why? Where's your craving at? A baby can't get enough of milk. Go ahead, Ms. Mark. That ye may grow. That we may not. grow. Mm -hmm. Notice that. No desire, no growth. Just that simple. No desire, no growth. And then when he said the word sincere, it means, now remember, he's talking about teaching. Right. Unadulterated. Yeah, the desire, the unadulterated teaching. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Just like, and he's using the concept of a baby. The mother had to check that milk, had to make sure. Think about that. So if you don't have a desire, then that means that you're not born again. Just that simple. If you don't, if you, if you don't have a desire, I like to say this way, you either not born again or you about to have a what? A spiritual, a spiritual death. If you don't believe me, let a mother bring a baby home from the hospital and that baby doesn't have a desire for her breast or milk. The, the milk. You better take that baby back to the hospital. Huh? You can say, well, he might eat tomorrow. Really? He might eat the next day. Really? No mother in their right sense. Now, a young child might not know the difference, but grandma will say, hey, come on, come on. We got to go back to the hospital. So I say this as, as a spiritual teacher. When I look around the congregation, I'm saying, where your Bible is? This, this is my bottle. What, what your bottle? I mean, you can't suck out from mine. And I'm off the bottle. Now, this, this is my steak right here. This is my red beans and rice right here. This is mine.
So the time comes, the writer said that we ought to grow. Am I right? We ought to grow. Now I told you earlier to turn well. Was it Matthew? Okay, let's go to Matthew. I'm going to show you something here. So we know that the word Daoxi means to learn, right? So that means to learn means that somebody teaching you. Right. Now, watch this here. Our, our famous commission, verse 18, Miss Rose, start at verse 18. Take your time. And Yeshua came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. That's a lot of power. <laughs> watch this here. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Now, notice this here. This is the word that we translate as disciple. This word here is in, in the Greek is 3100. It's mathil. It means to become a teacher, a learner. Okay? So he said, go you therefore and, and, and teach all nations. Right? But we translate it as disciple. But it's the word teach. So what are they going to teach them? What Yeshua taught them. You see what I'm talking about? So teach all nations. The word nation is ethnos, people, race. And once they once they receive the message, watch this here. Once they receive the message, then you baptize them. If they don't receive the message, you don't baptize them. That's why I can't baptize someone that doesn't sit under my teacher. That's not biblical. That's not biblical. So that's not biblical. We have to understand that. Let's play with this word for a moment. Play this word. I'm gonna show you something. So let's take a look at this word. Yeah, thirty-one hundred. So let's play with that word for a moment, because this word here that was translated as, as disciples is the word Matthias, and when I look at it, it's it's like the English word mad. It means to add, right? So it can be translated as a, a learner, a, a pupil. So you can't teach nothing that you haven't learned. Very important, guys. You can't teach nothing that you have not learned. So it, it means to learn, to understand. In other words, do you understand what you're learning? It can also mean a, 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 a scholar. It can mean a follower of a teacher. Very important. So I can tell who you're following just by, you know, what you're teaching. Now, I'm going to show you that the Pharisee had disciples. John had disciples. And we know that Yeshua had disciples. Am I right? right? Now, let's turn to Matthew chapter 22, verses 15 and 16. Let's play with this word for a moment. Ms. Rose, 15 and 16. Then went the Pharisees and took counsel how they might entangle him in his talk. Mm -hmm. And they sent out unto him their disciples. Oh, their what? Their, their disciples. See, yeah, they had disciples. So they was teaching. So now if you, if I'm a student of the Pharisees, I'm going to practice the Pharisees' doctrine. Mm -hmm. Am I right? Now, when you look at the Pharisees, we ain't going to go there, but, but the Pharisees, it, when you open up the Brit Hadashah or the New Testament, it seems like these people just, it just came out of nowhere. Because we don't see them in the Tanakh, right? You say, right, where they come from? I got a, a book to explain all that. They came out of Babylon. So they, they brought their teaching from Babylon. And so that's why their teaching was always contrary to Yeshua. Because why? They got the Tamu, the Babylonian teaching from Babylon, and then they come into the land, and a lot of them was converts. A lot of them was converts. These are the ones that Yeshua said, listen, he said, the truth shall make you free, John chapter 8. And they said that, well, we never been in bondage. That proved that they was not of the seed of Abraham. Because every seed of Abraham knew that we have been in bondage. Yeah, yeah. So that tells me that they was converts. Mm -hmm. These are the ones that Yahshua said, you snake, you vipers. Wow. 
You see the serpent, you know what I'm saying? The serpent. So he knew who, who they were. The same way that Ezra and Nehemiah knew that when the these these converts wanted to help them build the second uh, temple, they said, no, y'all can't ever do nothing. Why? Because they knew who they were. Paul says it like this here. Know those who labor among you. Why they can't help without study? We know who they are. They are not of us. I don't care because they came here, but they didn't stay. John say, if they were of us, they would have stayed. And to prove that they weren't of us, they left. So stop running after them. When Yeshua, Peter and them turned around one day and said, listen, everybody leaving you. He said, what? Do you want to go to? Yo, you Yeshua go? ain't never bad nobody. And when you grow up, now, when you're young in the ministry, you kind of beg people. But as you grow older in the ministry, like I am now, like, ah, yeah. hey, go. Because why? You want to befriend everybody. You really want people to come to know them. But, but after a while, you start growing in the Ruach. And then I just happen to see what my master did. Like, oh, y'all want to go too? This is powerful here. If they were of us, this is what John said, they would have stayed. But to prove that they wasn't. So the Pharisee had, they send their teachers, I mean their students, ah, because they knew what to tell them. So they said, now watch this, these are the groups that, listen, we have to understand there's different, man, oh, listen, y'all have to understand that when Yeshua comes on the scene, Rome is in power. See, this, this is about teaching. Rome is in power. So that means whoever's in power in your land control you. And so Rome didn't mind allowing the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the Sanhedrin set up their, uh, their religion. Because Rome said, listen, I don't care what y'all do. Just make sure y'all aren't on a wrong God. See, just like America. America don't care what God you worship, but when the flag is flown, they're playing the music, you stand and put your heart, your head, yeah, and like it's here. Yeah. You know what that is? All that is is a Mustang, a, a, a Mason symbol. You pledge it. The kingdom of Yah doesn't pledge. And if you if you move it, now watch this here. Pay attention to this. Now I saw it one day from a distance at the school I'm like oh. so all the kids when they go just for a second when the kids run and come to the school at a certain time they have to stop and, and, and because of the flat you know the music comes on and then they I say oh that's program that's training right and so the kids have to stop and play right and so I told the teacher or the nurse I say did you see that she said what I say what's the difference from this to this huh. Why? This is here, mm -hmm. then you bring it here. Mm -hmm. The cults use uh, signs that both mean the same thing. Mm -hmm. So if I was uh, being trained by Hitler, I do this. Mm -hmm. I'm submitting. If I'm being trained by America, I do this. Think about that. Mm -hmm. Yep. We we posted. I ain't gonna go there. But you know what I'm talking about. I don't even want to go there. Let's say it. So we talk about the Pharisees, right? They have disciples. Now their teaching was contrary to Yeshua. You say how you know? They they had Torah, yeah, but they had Talmud too. If they were studying the same thing that Messiah was teaching, why was there conflict? If we had the same King James and we love the same Yeshua, the same Jesus, the same God of the Bible, then what's the conflict to the other churches around? Huh? We got the same book. What's the conflict? Maybe you have another teacher and it's not the Ruach Kadesh. Because Yeshua said when the Ruach comes, he's going to take this here and show it to you. 
Let's go to Matthew chapter 15. Watch this here. Let's mess, mess with the Pharisee for a moment. This is by teaching, okay? We have to know what is the doctrine. Watch this, God. What is the doctrine of the Pharisees? And what is the doctrine, we're going to see later, of John the Baptist? What's the doctrine of, of Yeshua? I mean, you got to know their doctrine. So in Matthew chapter 15, Miss Rose, verse 1. Now watch this here. Let's check out some of the doctrine of the Pharisees. Then came to Yeshua scribes and Pharisees. Uh huh. Scribes and Pharisees. What is a scribe? One who copied the Torah. Right, right, right. Okay. Now the Pharisee had power, but the Sadducees had had more power than them and more money because they ran the temple. But the Pharisees ran, you know, what I'm saying the people. Two different groups. Okay, we had the Pharisees and Sadducees, but we had the said. Uh, 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 the Sanhedrin was like the Supreme Court. Those are the ones that Yeshua had to come up and had to stand up and, and, and be condemned. Okay? But the Pharisee had power, but uh, but the Sadducee had the money and the temple. Go ahead. Watch this here. Which were of Jerusalem uh -huh. saying, why did thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? No, no, no. Why don't they transgress the Torah? <laughs> Notice that mm -hmm. they didn't say why do your disciples transgress the Torah, but why read that again? Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? That's you need to hold on to that. This is what Yeshua is saying. I mean, they saying that we got some teaching different from Moses. That's the basic what they're saying that they are transgressing the tradition of the elders. Okay, so let's find out what some of the tradition of the elders are. Go ahead. For they wash not their hands oh. when they eat bread. Ah, now where in the Torah that it says that? It's not there. So they they let you know. Now remember, this, this is about teaching. So you say, well, man, nowhere in the Bible it says that you got to wash your hands a certain way. Now that is a good hygiene thing. Am I right? right, right. But they got this from somewhere else they didn't get it from the torah so the question is, where did they get it from the tabu now before we knock them for having tradition like that then let's take up some of the tradition that we have what about christmas what about easter what about sun worship and then we can mess with the the messianics i ain't let you off the hook neither that you let you like Canada say, Blessed is Yah, oh Jehovah King of the universe, who has commanded to light candles on the Sabbath. But that's not in the Torah. That's not in the Torah. Lighting candles is not in the Torah. Now you can do it if you want to to honor the Shabbat, the eve of the Shabbat, but you can't say, Blessed are thou, Jehovah, who has commanded us to kindle the light. No, 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 no. Ask any rabbi, where is that? Where is that? It's not there. It's not there. See how we can fall into even as okay, boom. We used to do lighting the candles, lighting the Hanukkah on the Hanukkah, the eight, huh, nine branch. We wrote it right. We did that. But it's not even in the Maccabees. Well, where do you get it from? The time. See, we got to be careful. We cannot knock the Pharisees for their traditions and then ignore our traditions. Go ahead. Where am I? <laughs> but he answered and said unto them, Why do ye also transgress the commandment of Yahweh? By Notice your tradition. By your tradition. And man has not changed. Man has not changed. I, I'm going to keep my Sunday. I'm going to keep my Easter, my Christmas. I'm going to keep it. Why? Because it's a Baptist tradition. It's a Protestant tradition. You see? The same thing. Ain't nothing changed. Go ahead. For Elohim commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother, and 
He that curseth father or mother, let him die the death. But ye say, Whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, It is a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me. And honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Thus have ye made the commandment of the home of none effect. Notice that. Notice, your tradition. notice what Yeshua said. Tradition destroys the commands of God. Huh? That's right. Tradition cause you to lose the anointing in the congregation. That's why when people say, you know, I'm teaching, and, and, and just because I give you the name of the lesson, then, then I might flow in another direction. And you say, man, why does he stick to the teeth? It, why? Because it's all compass. You got to be able to, to stick with me. Okay? Move with me. Breaking it down. But some people are stuck on their notes. Stuck on their notes. So Yeshua gets on them, right? And so, so he talks to them. And this is what the disciples said after he finished rebuking them, right? Calling them hypocrites and so on and so on and so on. Listen to what verse 12 says. <laughs> Go ahead, Ms. Rowe. Then came his disciples and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended after they heard this saying? Huh? Notice that. Your teaching, if it doesn't fend. Huh? If it doesn't fend them. Notice that. They was offended because he called them out. Why? They was leaders. They don't like to be called out. Huh? They love the praises in the synagogue. They love the praises in the marketplace. They love to wear the long tassels. And the garment, they say, Oh, Rabbi, oh, Rabbi, oh, Rabbi. That's no different. Hey, Pastor, hey, Pastor, how you doing? Dr. So and so, Deacon So and so. We, we, we have to be careful that we don't love the praises of man more than the praises of Yah. So, we're talking about that. We ain't even got started yet. Let's look at a verse here that we're familiar with. Let's go to Acts. Acts chapter 2. Now, Acts chapter 2 is after the day of Pentecost. Shabbat Now watch this here. Where did the apostles get their doctrine from? From Yeshua HaMashiach, the rabbi. Our mm -hmm. Rabon, our master teacher. Mm -hmm. He's the only one we should call master. Mm -hmm. He's the only one we should call rabbi. Mm -hmm. How hard it is when he say call no man rabbi. Mm -hmm. Huh? Mm -hmm. He told us don't call no man rabbi. Rabbi means master teacher. We only have one master teacher, and that's Yahshua. Mm -hmm. And look what they do in the Orthodox and in, 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 in some in the Messianic, how they call themselves rabbis when they're sure. So that's telling me that they don't believe in Yeshua message. He said, don't call no man rabbi, master, teacher. And he said, tell you why, because you only have one master. So after, after the day of Shabbat Pentecost, right? So we know how many people got 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 uh, uh, born again 3000 right and they gladly received the apostles doctrine right now watch this here verse 41 uh miss marvel chapter 2 acts chapter 2 verse 41 acts 2 41 then they that gladly received his word were baptized Holy. now notice that so here's the difference if they did receive the word should, they wouldn't have been baptized. Right, right, right. We're not listen. He put a cover right there. Listen, they received the word. Huh? Now they received their words. Now they baptized. Huh? Right, right. Go ahead. And and this and his word was baptized. And the same day there were added unto them about three thousand souls. Three thousand souls. Mm -hmm. What a what a church growth. Huh? From 120 in the room to 3,000, man, that's 3,120 people. Huh? What you gonna do with all the people? Huh? 
Everybody better bring something or we stop eating. <laughs> we'll be doing like this here. Y'all bring your own snack. We'll sell it out. I feed my family, you feed your family. Watch this. Here. Verse 42 said, now, now watch what these people did. Now, where did the apostle get their doctrine from? Yeshua. Where did Yeshua get his doctrine from? Okay, now watch this here. And they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. Do you hear and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayer. They stood in the apostle doctrine. They're still keeping what Yeshua taught them. Huh? Yeah. So the early church was built on the apostles' yeah. doctrine. Would you agree? Right. On the apostles' doctrine. We have to understand. So we need to understand. So where did the apostles get their doctrine from Yeshua? Right. Where Yeshua got his doctrine from, from the Father. Father. What? Bible did he use the Tanakh? Huh? From Genesis to Monica. Am I right? Mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. The Tanakh. Tanakh. That's an acronym for Torah, the Prophet, and the Nabi. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeshua saved the law of Moses, the Prophet, and the Song. Now watch this. Here. So now, watch this. Here. So the early church, this is the beginning of the early church. That doctrine was built on the apostle doctrine. Which come from the Torah, the Tanakh, right? Right. Watch this here. Now let's go to Ephesians, Ephesians chapter four. Watch this here. You know what? I want to look at this verse here first. Go to a, a, a Ephesians chapter two. Watch this here. Ephesians chapter two. So the early church, 3,000 sold, 5,000 later, but they were built on, now, 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 just think about this here. Doctrine was important for the first century church. But today, doctrine is not important. It's not. It's who can hum, and Lord, yeah. It's, it, it's all, if you pay attention with the right ears, you close your eyes, and if you take away the word Jesus every now and then that they used, all you went to was a motivation seminary. That's all it was. It's all it was. You gotta know it. But doctrine, it brings conviction to you. Okay, okay. Saying? Doctrine has one, it's a brain correction. How can we walk like the first century church and act like them when we have different doctrines? Peter and them come back today, they would know what the heck going on. Right. Now, they would definitely recognize, oh, this wrong. Mm -hmm. This is what we're trying to warn y'all about. Now, watch this here. In Ephesians chapter 2, so we saw that the church was built on the apostle doctrine. Am I right? Watch this here. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 19. Now, Chapter 2, verse 19. Now, therefore, you are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of Elohim. Right? He talked to these new converts, right? So now, you come into the community, right? You're a citizen now. Verse 20. And are built upon what? The foundation of who? The apostle. He left them in charge. The foundation. The teaching. The foundation of the apostles and the prophets. Mm -hmm. And Yeshua himself being what? The, the chief cornerstone. Huh? He holds everything. That, listen, that's an ancient uh, concept. Because when they build a building, before they build anything, they put the cornerstone there. Mm -hmm. And everything was built around the cornerstone. Very important. So Yeshua, if you take Yeshua out of your ministry, then you got a different cornerstone. Yep. It's the cornerstone that keeps the building lined up. Yeah. You see? Mm -hmm. He's the plumb line. Yeah. And it says, verse 21, in whom all the building fit, framed together, grow unto what? A holy temple unto Jehovah. 
and whom ye also are what? Built together as a habitation of Elohim through the Spirit. That's the purpose of us coming together and the word of Yah is set in the building. Long as the Messiah is on the is in this place here, then everyone is being built around it. Built around it. Too many people in the kitchen, nothing get done. You see nothing? Watch this here. I'm about to close. But how is this going to be done, Miss Marvel? Mm. It, it has to be some kind of order going on. Yep. How is this going to happen? Is it going to happen by itself? No. Nothing. Even the government ain't ran by itself. We we hear about the government, but have you have you ever saw the government? No. no. But you see the action, you see its power, don't it? Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to see the government, but you see the power of the government. Right. Right. You don't have to see the kingdom, but you see the power of the kingdom. Oh my goodness. Ain't nobody you ever met Uncle Sam. But you don't want to get a letter from him, don't you? Now watch this here. So how is this, 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 this body that's going to come together fit, firm, and notice the purpose of, of us of function? Because if, if you pay attention to it, it's just like the tabernacle. And the purpose of the tabernacle was to inhabit the spirit of Yah. Am I right? The purpose of us coming together, being fit and joined together is for the same thing, the spirit of Yah. Did not it say that? So if we want the spirit of Yah to in inhabit in the congregation, then we got to line up with the word. Huh? The spirit of Yah did not come until Moses them finished the tabernacle. Exodus chapter 40 tells us that and after Moses hung and finished, then the spirit came in that place that they could not even minister to that place. Once we come together under this anointing, under this word, man, we're going to come in here one, and the, the yard is just going to hover in this place. People are going to get healed just like this here. That's why we are so in unity. We understand that we are body. We're not thinking about each other. We're not... Uh, uh, Complaining under our breath, we are coming and unified. We we understand that 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 what we say away from here will affect what God do here. So we start learning like let's not complain about each other while we're not here because it affects the knowing when we come. Oh, well we start thinking like that. Well we start thinking like that. We start thinking like that. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We start thinking like that. How many people we got? Okay, we got the EP, okay? Put up every name in there, okay? You pull out, okay? Oh, this is Miss Rose. You got a whole week to the Shabbat to pray for. Her. Whatever the Holy Spirit lay on. Then next week on the Shabbat to put all the, the names in again. I'm giving you an idea. Write that down for me, huh? <laughs> and then we put why? Okay, just think about that. And then if you pull your own name out, then you put it back in there. Huh? Why? Because we, we, listen, listen, we, what, what they taught us a long time ago, what you make happen for others, that's for real. That's a real thing. Yes, it is. So we need a precious prayer box. Yeah. And find me a Bible verse that, that talked about we pray for one another. Find a good Bible verse. Whatever the Holy Spirit give to you, we have a pretty thing, and that's what we do. You, you, you want to be in charge of that? Yeah. Okay. But think about that. For us to unify the purpose of us being joined together is to be a habitation. Either you, either we're going to be a habitation of the spirit of Yah or a habitation for demons. Uh, 
So how is this going to happen, Pastor? Well, when you start putting bones together, something has to be broken. Am I right? It, 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 it's, come on now. And you have to understand that when he, soon he said bones, it just came to me. Soon he came bones, I, I, I can hear the shaking. You know what I'm saying? The rattling in, in Ezekiel, right? The Ezekiel chapter 37, the rattling, there was a shaking going. These bones, these bones. So how is this going to be happening? How is this going to happen? Well, he already done said it, all of these things. I'm going to show you. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 4. How is this going to happen, Pastor? Mm -hmm. About to land this plane. Mm -hmm. Well, I have a scripture one time. Oh, let me find it. Do I have it here? Dang it. Hey, I'm going to show you what I'm about to, this is, uh, 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 he gave some apostles and some evangelists, right there, right? Uh -huh. Okay, he gave some apostles, now this how it's uh -huh. going to be done, but, mm -hmm. but I'm going to show you this verse here, it's going to make you more sense that when you read, and he gave some apostles, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, let's go to Psalm 68, and then we'll come back, I'm going to show you this here, Psalm 68. Watch this here. Psalm 68. Now, think about Ephesians chapter 4, 11 through 17. Now, watch this here. I'm going to start reading. Psalm 68, verse 1. Let Elohim, let Elohim rise, right? Mm -hmm. Let his enemy be scattered, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Let them also that hate him flee before him. As smoke is driven away, so driven away, them away. As wax melt before the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. Do y'all hear what the psalmist said? Because our God is a consuming fire, right? Now watch this here. Let the righteous be glad. Let them rejoice before Elohim. Yea, let them exceed and rejoice. Sing to Elohim, sing praises to his name, exhort him that rided upon the heaven by his name, Yah. That's powerful right there. Wow. Do you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. And rejoice before him. Yeah. A father of the fatherless, Woo. a judge of the world, is Elohim in his holy habitation. Did not we talk about that? Yeah. Yeah. And watch this here. Elohim said it in the solitary, in the family. He bring, bring it out those which are bound with chain. But the rebels dwell in dry land. Oh, Elohim, when thou went forth before thy people, when thou did march through the wilderness, Selah. Oh, did y'all hear what the psalmist said? The earth shook. The heaven also dripped, dropped with the presence of Elohim. Even Sinai itself was moaned at the presence of Elohim and the Elohim of Israel. Ooh, this powerful right here. Thou, O Elohim, did send a plent uh, I'm sorry, plentiful rain, whereby thou did confirm thy inheritance when it was weary. Thou congregation has dwelled therein. Oh, Elohim, oh, Elohim has prepared thy goodness for the poor. Elonah gave thy word, great was the company of those that published it. Kings of armies did flee. A space also, she that tarry at home divided the spa. Now, watch this here. Though you have lied, is that pronouncing right? Though you have what? Lean, okay. Among the pot, yea, ye, okay, ye shall be as the wings of a dove covered with silver, and her feathers with thy yellow gold. Watch this here, verse 14. When the Almighty El Shaddai scattered the kings in it, it was white as snow in Simon. The hills of Elohim is as the hill of ba Bashan, right? Bashan or Bashan. As, as high hills as the hills of Bashan. Verse 16. Why leap ye? <laughs> ye hills 
looked at the question. This is the hill which Elohim desire to dwell in. Yea, Jehovah will dwell in it for how long? Forever. The chariots of Elohim are 20,000, even thousands of angels. Adonai is among them as in Sinai in the holy place. Now watch this here. Thou has ascended on high, right? Thou has led captivity captive. Thou has received gifts for man, yea, for the rebellion also, that Jehovah Elohim might dwell among them. Blessed be Adonai, who, the, uh, who daily load us with benefits, even Elohim of our salvation. That's a powerful song. Now I'm going to read verse 18 again. Thou has ascended on high, thou has led captivity captive, thou has uh, received gifts for men, yea, for the rebellion also, that Jehovah Elohim might dwell among his people. Now let's go to Ephesians. Because y'all can read the rest of that on y'all. I'm getting dry mouth for a morning right there. Now watch this here. So now when the Apostle Paul picked up on this here, he understood the concept. Watch this here. I'm going to bring it up in verse 9. Watch this here, Ephesians chapter, uh, and just go back and read all Psalm 68 and compare it to what I'm about to read. And you'll see that your home was kicking butt. Would you agree? Mm -hmm. He was going in, destroying the wicked. He was doing his thing. He was, he was muscling his muscle, right? Now watch this here. Verse 8, I'm sorry. Verse 8. Wherefore he said, when he ascended on high, he led captive, captive, and gave gift to men. What you just read that at? It's Psalm 68. What he is saying here, watch this here. Now, he that ascended, what it is, but that he also descended from into the lower part of the earth. He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above the heaven that he gave, I mean, that he might feel all things. Now watch this here before we go any further. If you understand this, what Paul is saying, he's saying that when, watch this here. Now, they told us this here, but they can't make it up. When, find a verse for me. When Yeshua descended, but not into hell, he descended. Paul quoted this verse that Yeshua went and had war, took the power from Satan, took the key, so to speak, took it. There was a war going on, right? Uh -huh. But we know that Yeshua went and did some butt kicking. Because the psalm explained it to us what happened here. And if we look at Psalm 68, it's a war song. Proving that Elohim is true. His enemy flee from, from him. So Paul is saying that, that these gifts that Yeshua gave us, it wasn't free. He went and took them. Did y'all catch that? He went and took them from the enemy. And so, watch this here. So, ooh, thank you. Man. When you read Psalm 68, that's a lot of action going on, right? A lot of butt kicking, right? So now watch this here. So now Yeshua go kick butt, and then the scripture says that then he gave gift unto men. Mm -hmm. Now watch this here. Mm -hmm. So now he gave gift again. He ascended. Then he also descended for above, that ascended for above all heaven, that he might feel all things. And now that he connects Psalm 68, with this here. And what I want y'all to catch. What I'm about to say. So now these gifts. Is war. Mm -hmm. uh, war. It's war. Uh -huh. Did you get that? Because uh -huh. if you go back and read Psalm 6 and 8. Yeah. It's a lot of butt kicking now. Right? So now these gifts. And I got to be. If, if you're a teacher. You better teach as war. And so I'm, I'm using the two-edged sword, cutting down all man-made religion. So a teacher, I'm cutting it down. Huh? Think about that. These fivefold gifts, 
is not to pacify the people. There's a war going on, a spiritual war. There's a battle for your soul. Wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. Never saw like that before, huh? Yeah. Once you connected with some, wow. see, Paul understood that. So he gave, he, and so, and he gave some apostle. What is apostle? Having the balls to set in order. Apostle got to be encouraged, okay? You don't believe me? When they told Peter and them, don't you speak that name again. Huh? Peter and them said, no, no, listen, 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 If it seemed to you to be evil to, to obey God of you, then you say what it was, but we, we, we must obey God. Huh? So the apostle can't be weak. Peter said, we cannot... But preach what we have seen and heard. Put it in order. Got to put things in order. You can do what you want to do. Beat us up. Stone us. But the message ain't going to die. So somebody else pick up the message with the same apostle knowing it. It's a warning. So apostles come and set things in order. That's why Paul was one of the greatest apostles. He put things in order. Paul tells the Galatians, do I become your enemy? Because I'm telling you the truth. If another come preaching, another Jesus, another Yeshua, even if an angel come, who cares? Take your time. Paul tell him, who has bewitched you? Who has put a spell on you? His apostle said things in order. You see? So apostle, once you understand that, that's a war. That's a war. Think about that. Now you ain't gonna never look at Ephesians chapter 4 like that again. It's a war. So apostles said things in order, right? Then he said that that he gave some and some prophets. He gave, he can't be afraid that what the Holy Spirit speaks down in it. You know how much courage that it took Nathan to come to King David and tell him. My, my, my. Huh? My, my, my. You the man. Yeah, you, it was you. He could have been <laughs> killed on the spot. It, right it yeah. took courage. I speak you see what I'm talking about? Uh-huh. So a prophet is the a Nadine is the one that Yah speaks on the behalf of Yah. Yeah. He don't add to nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Don't Jeremiah that. sold in heaven. Huh? Ezekiel and them. All, all these, listen, they died not receiving the promise. They preached it to us that we can believe the same that they had. Think about that. These fivefold gifts is war. Because prophets pretty much came to help us stay with. Yeah, and you can put the fivefold gift like this here. Well, okay? then, really, that would be ready to listen. You fight, you stand for the truth. So he gave some, then, and then he says here, and he's, he gave some pastors, huh? Shepherd the flock, protect the flock from the wolves. And the co evangelists go from place to place, always on. Huh? He stirred up mess. He stirred up all the run. It's like, he, I'm saying. He stirred him up. He's the evangelist is like the sheep dog. He bark at him so much, but he knows where he's trying to get them to go. That's why when you bring evangelists the, the town, the, the listen, he said, listen, I'm just a avenger. Now, this is what's gonna happen. I'm gonna set up over here. How many pastors y'all got in this church? Uh, this, this city, okay? Y'all better be there because I don't know which way they're going to run. So y'all got to be ready to catch them. <laughs> you see what I'm talking about? Why would the banjo do all that work if he if he a true banjo? He understand that you can't come stir up people and don't point them to somewhere. Yeah, you have to. Yeah, you you, you got to have somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Then, the last old poor one, the teacher. Yeah. The, the teacher. See, everybody loves the pastor. Hey, pastor. No teacher. I was ordained as a teacher. And what's the pastor's? 
Yeah, he's a, he's a, I'm going to show you what Paul said. Okay, let's go, a pastor, okay? Let's go to Acts. I'm going to show you. Now, explain to my wife why I stay so late. Say, Miss Marvel kept me. Watch what Paul says here. In his, uh, Acts chapter 20. Paul understood this here. Remember, he's an apostle. Now, notice what an apostle does. Notice what an apostle does. Y'all know Paul wasn't scared. Paul got stoned in one city, and then he went and he wanted to go back in. He said, man, you know they want to. <laughs> but Paul had anointing. Paul was so glad to be set free. Yeah, yeah. Notice, notice what Paul says to those in, in Ephesus. He says in verse 20, this is what he says. And now I did what? Verse 20. I did what? And now I have what? Kept nothing. Come on now. I need a microphone. But I've showed you, right? And have taught you mm. publicly. For what? And from house, house to house. house. This is what Paul did. Go ahead. Testifying both to the Yahuwah uh -huh. and also to the Greeks, uh -huh. repentance toward Elohim and faith towards our Adonai Yeshua Hamashiach. Now watch what Paul, look at the courage that he's going to talk about. Listen to what Paul said, go ahead. And now, behold, I go bound in the spirit unto mm -hmm. Jerusalem, mm -hmm. not knowing the things that shall befall me there, say that the Holy Ghost witnesses in every city saying that bonds and afflictions cool. me. but you still want to be a pastor did a pastor did listen what this this is the true message of your show up well, well, well. can you imagine uh, uh, uh had to learn this verse in in, in, in bible school my, my, my. this is what paul is saying bonds and affliction in every city who told him that the ruach kadesh Go ahead. But none of these things move me. Why? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Why none of this stuff move Paul? Why none of this move Paul? Why was not Paul afraid? Count I my life, neither See, that's the problem. my life there unto myself. That's the problem right there. See, that's the problem with many of us. We count our life too good. Yeah, yeah. Huh? We don't want to offend people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know Paul said, listen. I died. When did, listen, when did Paul die? When did Paul die? On, the road to on, on what road? That's right. Paul died. Mm -hmm. yeah, what did yeah, Paul yeah. say in, 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 in the book of Galatians 2.20? What did it say? I have been what? Cru 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 crucified. With who? He died right there. See? That's why Paul can say that. I don't count my life dear. Yeah, he died. That's what we got to do. He was a that's why he was able to do that. Mm -hmm. He wasn't getting in the ministry because right. they promised him uh, 10, 10, uh, uh, 10 mules and all that kind of stuff. He wasn't getting in it for money. Mm -hmm. right, right. He understand. He said, I mean, Paul said, I did this here. I, I was crucified with the Mushiach. Yeah, yeah. Nevertheless, I live, but not I that live, but Christ living me. And the life that I live now, I live by the faithfulness of the son of Elohim. That's it. He was able to say that. Oh, he said the Holy Spirit, the Ruach told him that Paul in every city mm -hmm, mm -hmm. bound, chain in the place. But he said, I go bound in the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. oh! Woo! That's what oh, Read the givers, bro. That's powerful right there. Mm -hmm. I hope y'all listening, paying attention. Stop believing that old, uh, that, that old fake cock candy ministry preaching your best life. Every time you turn around, it's a it's a good prayer of how God want to bless you and all that old sick mess. The true gospel is persecution. And now, behold, I go bound in the spirit into Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there. Say that the Holy Ghost witnesses in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions abide me. But none of these things move me, neither count I my life there unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received at the Adonai Yeshua to testify the gospel of the grace of Elohim. Mm -hmm. 
And now, behold, I know that ye all, among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of Elohim, shall see my face no more. Can you imagine the tears that's going on here? Can you imagine the tears that's going on here? Paul, when you read the letters of Paul, the majority, I would go on record and say, at least 99, 98, 99% was written in prison. In a Roman cell, but could you? But did you ever hear hear him complaining? Woe is me! Oh, nobody come visit me! Oh, no! Did you hear him complain? The letter he's in prison encouraging us. Oh, he encouraging us. This is the true message here: a Messiah. He bound. How many of us bound in the spirit by the Ruach? Yeah. I know the most. Y'all told me to come here. I'm bound here. I don't care what, what how my flesh get offended. Yeah, Notice that. I don't care how my flesh get offended. Because the flesh do get offended. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But you have to be bound by the spirit to be here. Yeah. I was listening to... Uh, the March of Madness, a game was about to be played, right? What time does you got to get out of here? Five okay, five minutes, five minutes. And so the coach met him, encouraging his, his team, right? He's talking to him, right? And so as he was talking, the rock talking to me. Like, why I can't talk to my team like that? And they're like, well, that's too good. No, no, why? Listen, they're going, what scripture is going to mind? The scripture is going to mind is that they're going to win a what Paul called a corruptible crown. Mm, oh, my, my, my. Am I right? Oh, yeah. mm. Paul said that's corruptible, but we are trying to get the eternal crown. And how are we gonna how are we gonna grow when you've been offended by everything I say? When I'm talking about we don't fight against flesh and blood, I gotta talk rough every now and then. Okay, case in point. Watch this here. Now, why are we late every every Saturday? Now, how about if I say, guys, why are we late every? It's twelve o'clock. Why are we dragging in here at twelve twenty, twelve thirty? But I'm like, nah, I'm leaving up to y'all. But if, if if I wanted to, I have the right to say that. Now, you can take it how you want to take it, but I'm like, come on. We need everybody to be on board. So Paul said in verse 26, wherefore I take, now watch, it's the warning. This for you, Ms. Marvel, the difference between a pastor. I mean, a pastor, you know what I'm saying? He's shepherding the flock, right? He said, now, now wherefore I take you to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men. Paul said, I don't owe nobody nothing. Watch this. He said, for I have for I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel. I ain't holding nothing back. Now, here's a warning. This is what shepherds do. Apostles do. This is what he said. Take heed, guard therefore unto yourself. Why, Paul? And to all the flock over which the Ruach Kadesh has made you overseer. The word overseer is the, is the Greek word persecutor. That's all the word means. To, to do what, Paul? To feed the ecclesia of Elohim, which he has purchased with his own blood. Y'all don't belong to me. My job is to feed you. Didn't I tell Peter? Feed my sheep. Notice who the sheep belongs to. And, and, and I hope that I never get it twisted. That's why I told y'all. I don't make people do nothing around here. I know this. What you know, Paul? That after my departing, shall what come? Yeah. I got to know there's sheep and there's wolves. I got to know there's, there's, there's sheep and there's goats. I got to know that. If I teach a soft message, then wolves can hang around. I told my wife one time, I say, you know what? People don't stay around. They got different agenda because I ain't no punk. <laughs> if I was like a little weak pastor that always just, just tossing and forth by every way in the doctor, oh yeah, people will run you. 
You can't cater to everybody. You teach the word. Tell my kids, you eat what's in the kitchen. I don't want that. Well, you're going to go to bed hungry. Other words, I'm going to teach the word. You either eat it or not. It ain't my problem. So Paul said, grievous wolves shall well enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Notice how Paul warning them. He's about to go and be beheaded. Also of your own self shall rise, shall, shall men arise, speaking perverse things to draw away what? There you go. Huh? Oh, I know what Pastor Sharon. You know, I, you know, he's he's all right, but uh, you know, I can yeah, yeah. Watch those. You have to watch the smooth because the Antichrist and his crew they smooth. Oh yeah, they smooth. They know how to say the words and they know the Bible. I mean, they just smooth. Be careful of that. Verse thirty one. Therefore, watch and remember that by how long the space of three years I cease not to warn. Everyone, night and day. That's what I do. Blow the trumpet. Blow the trumpet. So we're talking about kingdom doctrine. If the most high say the same, we'll touch back on some more next week. But we have to understand that sound doctrine is very important. Father, we bless you. We thank you once again. I pray, Father, that uh, as you said in your word, that your word would not return to you void. I pray that something was said here that benefit those in the house and those who are watching. We thank you, Father. And I pray that as we continue to prepare for Passover, that you will prepare our heart. I pray, Father, as we begin the 21-day fast for the purpose of reaching people. I pray that you will prepare the people's heart, Father. Whatever that fast may be, Father, that we fast it to you, Father, not into man, for the souls of man. So we bless you. We thank you for the opportunity, Father, to be a mediator between man and you. Hallelujah, Father, that we can intercede, Father. So we just thank you right now. We want to be an ambassador that represents you and nothing else, Father. No tradition of man, not my agenda, but your agenda. And let your sure take the rightly place in his ecclesia that he purchased with his blood. And that he will continue to be the chief cornerstone. So we bless you. May your Holy Spirit have his way here each time that we meet here together in the mighty name of Yeshua. Hallelujah. Israel, may you have a blessed day and keep thee. May you have a make his face shine upon thee and be glorious to thee. May you have a lift those come upon thee and give thee peace. May you have a destroy all the chaos in your life in the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach. And all everybody say, Amen, Amen. amen, amen. Guys, we thank y'all for tuning in. Sorry about that little mix-up early. No sound, but we we recover real good. <laughs> so we bless y'all. If y'all say the same, we'll see y'all back here this Shabbat. Thank y'all for coming back and tuning in. I'm Pastor Sherman Jones. Shalom. Shalom. All right.